Okay, I'm trying to work out, was Jasper Skytram really worth it? We had to wait one hour for food. Would you wait that long? Come and let me show you what happened. And don't miss what happens at the end of the day. Hi, Michelle here from Travelling Over 60. Come join me on this adventure. Let's do a recap of Jasper. So we arrived, we did a town walk around, we came to our accommodation, we had a look at the outside of Jasper Park Lodge. After we did that, we went and had a walk around the inside of Jasper Park Lodge. I then took you across and we had a look at our room. Was it really glamping? Finally, we had our freedom of choice dinner in the Great Hall, then off to bed. The next morning, we were up and into town early and went and did some of our washing. Now for our next freedom of choice. Okay, call me crazy, call me old, or maybe I'm just really unfit. But some of these freedom of choice were a bit of a hazard to me. A motorcycle ride, a hike, rafting on the Alabasca River. We did the Sky Tram. We checked out the temperature before we went up that mountain and it was five degrees. So we went and dressed appropriately. We put on jeans, thick socks, our walking boots, a long sleeve t-shirt, jumper, jacket, gloves, scarf and our beanies. I think we're ready now, so let's go and have a look at Jasper Sky Tram. We were collected from our accommodation and taken to the Sky Tram on a shuttle bus. Now we went across and we had to line up and wait to get on. Everything there was flat ground, easy walking. This is what the little Sky Tram looks like. I'm starting to get nervous now. So it pulled into the station and then it was just a flat step into an open carriage where you stand up. Now some of you may know from previous videos, I'm not very good with heights, but if I'm in an enclosed carriage like this, I seem to cope better. As we headed up, I just tried to focus on the landscapes until we got to the top. Have a listen what our guide said. So you guys are heading up Whistler's Mountain, named after the marmots that live on here. They make a whistling sound, it's a bit like a big guinea pig. Um, they make whistling noises and they come out in the summertime. And then when you do reach the top, it's just over two and a half thousand metres of elevation. Um, so you'll feel your ears start to pop soon. Um, Now I was really lucky. I was the first one in the queue waiting to get on the little carriage. And luckily I walked straight in, straight to the front, up to the window, and that's what got me these amazing photos. I hope you're liking all these photos. If you are, Show me by giving me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it really does help me out. Another thing to note, you do have a staff member that comes all the way to the top with you, as you've probably heard. And she gives commentary all the way up. Uh, we'll be able to walk around the edge of the building. Oh, it's a long way up. The boardwalk to look at the view. <laughs> <laughs> are we there, are we? Oh. Are we Not there? quite. Yes, Meredith. Almost. Okay, we've made it to the top. A little bit of a ramp there, but otherwise it's very flat. You can get all the way around the main building. And just over here, this is the main building where you can go into the shop and up to the restaurant. But first off, we're gonna walk around. And here we are at the top 
of the sky train. Oh, it's very cold up here. It was lovely and warm down in Jasper, but it's cold up here at the top. Lots of snow. And look at that. They warned us it would be windy up here, but not so far. Look at it from this side. Now, we've just moved up into where that little green observation deck was. And this is what it looks like from up there. Oh, wow, it's amazing. No matter which way I look, I keep saying it. Oh, wow, it's amazing. I wish that the photos were showing up how blue the water down below looked, but nothing will ever let you see those colours unless you see it for yourself. Now, we just walked round the other side and what we saw was so different. And this happened. From the other side, it's blowing a gale. I hope you can hear me. Bring your beanies and your scarves. Now, I did walk all the way to the end to show you what the boardwalk was like. But boy, I don't know how I didn't get blown off that boardwalk and onto the mountain. As you can see here, it's very easy walking, plenty of snow around, and then we just kept walking back up. I didn't stay out here very long, but just kept walking back up here. You'll see the next sort of surface. Here we go. It's just a little tiny ramp. And then up onto this black surface, which was easy walking again. But I'm going inside. I'm hungry and cold and I'm going inside. Now there's washrooms just there on the left hand side and then things started to go wrong. There's only stairs up to the restaurant and up to the restaurant we went with this amazing view. But then we thought we'd order some food. Now I'm just gonna give you a bit of a look at the menu. You can pause this and have a look. This is the food they sold, so just basic food. I ordered a cheese sandwich and hubby ordered a burger. It took them one hour to get our food ready and bring to us. We were not very happy. When we tried to pay the bill, they told us we had to wait. We waited another 10 minutes. We tried to be really patient, but we had a shuttle to get back on. So we were rushing to get back on the tram down to the ground and on the shuttle that would take us back to our accommodation. Every time we asked the staff a question, they snapped back at us. They were very rude. And it was everybody. We, none of us were being rude back to them, but they were very rude to us. I'm not sure if they were overworked, but there's no excuse for rudeness. Now, we paid the bill and we did have plenty of time in the end. We rushed over, we got onto the tram, and then I started to get anxious going down. Now, the trip in total takes about six minutes approximately, and so I tended to just focus on the landscape and not anticipate dropping off the edge of this mountain. Just for the length of this video, I am going to speed it up just a little bit. The train down there? Where? Oh, no. I can't. Oh, there's one coming over to the left. Oh, there. Three, yeah, Three kilometres long. Now, you may have heard me say that my ears were hurting. As we came down the mountain, my ears did really start to hurt. When we went up, they blocked over and everything was quite echoey. And they told me that's just to do with us going up high on the mountain. But coming down, they were quite painful. I had to keep putting my fingers in my ears to just stop a bit of that pressure. So keep that in mind your ears might start to hurt just a little bit. It wasn't unbearable, but maybe just a little bit as you come down the mountain. Here comes another tram up the mountain. Three weeks. Three 
That looks fast. That one was moving quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Going up. So there was another tram that came after this one. This looks like we're going to fall off the edge of the earth. I'm sure that's what they are saying. It goes steep again. Oh, oh, this does this is not. a little steepy bit. Can you just hold the edge of my jacket, please? <laughs> oh, it's like the roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my ears. Oh, and there's that train. <coughs> so we've travelled past the steepest part now, but I still wasn't comfortable until we started to get a little bit lower. And the lower we went, as the trees <laughs> seemed to be a bit closer to me, I did start to feel a bit better. Now, just looking at us coming in here to the end, you can see some people walking there on the left-hand side. That just gives you a bit of a look at what the ground was like. And as we come in here, it does get a little bit bumpy. But they did slow it right down. As you can see, just to come in and then it docks, I suppose it's called, and it will stop and it's just a small step, the same as when we got on to get off. Okay, did we think the Sky Tram was worth it? Absolutely. A holiday is what you make of it. The views we saw were amazing. We loved every minute of it. Oh, maybe not the hour wait for lunch or the rudeness, but it was great anyway. Phew, our day is done. We headed back to our accommodation and we'd had enough. Lots of people caught the shuttle, went back into town to a restaurant. But while we're in town, we just bought some bits and pieces and had a picnic dinner. We were just happy with some sandwiches and we still have those bits and bites that I do not like. And some chocolate for dessert. But something else is happening tonight. We've heard we might see the northern lights tonight. So we're going to have an early night and get up about 11.30 to see what we can see. Now, I have an app on my phone that tells me when you can see the northern lights. It sends me notifications. Now, this is what the picture looks like of the app. And if you get that before you go to Canada, it will just send you like a little message that says that they're around. It doesn't tell you anything else. It doesn't guarantee you're going to see anything, but it comes up and says you have a good chance. So I was notified that tonight I might see the Northern Lights. Well, I'm very excited. Now, some people say get up at 11.30, some people say 12.30, and some people say 3.30. I don't know what's the perfect time. I got up at 11.30 and, you know, maybe it's not as good as the people that got up at 3.30. But come along with me and let me show you what I saw on this particular night. Let's go. It's three degrees and it's 11.30. Now I'm heading out and I'm just going to wander around to see if I can see the northern lights. I'm a little bit worried that there might be bears around. And it's quite dark outside, so I'm not going to venture too far. Now, it's really dark in some places, but on the horizon, just above the houses, it's really light. I'm not sure if that's it, but I spent over an hour looking and then went inside. Okay, I'm a little bit disappointed. I got up at 11.30 and sure, I've showed people my photos and they've said, yes, that's definitely the Northern Lights, but it's not what I was really expecting. It's not what I was looking for. 
Now they've also told me about how to change the camera on my phone to get the best exposure of the Northern Lights. Now this is it here. So one of the people that was on one of the Facebook pages that I was following before I went to Canada, they put this up so we could read and see how to do it. So pause for a minute and read what it says. Now you might even like to take a screenshot of that and take it with you when you go because you're likely to forget how to do it. It was very simple. So we changed our phones and then, I'm not sure, but wait and see what we see tomorrow night. Did you like that video? I hope you did. Please give me a thumbs up. That will help YouTube know that people are liking what I'm putting out there and then they share it with more people. It's not about being popular. It's about telling YouTube what you like and what you don't like. Have you subscribed to my channel? Please go across and subscribe to my channel. That also helps YouTube know that people want to watch more of my videos and then they'll put it out to more people. And it really helps me out. I don't make any money off these videos. It's purely a hobby for me. And I really want to help people that want to know this information. So don't forget, thumbs up, leave a comment if you'd like, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it and come along on the rest of my adventures with me.